Sunrise, it's there every day and available to us, but can feel so elusive at the time of waking. We have never been disappointed with the sunrise paddle or even just getting up to see it, but so many days we sleep in and just do not make that little bit of effort. I would encourage anyone who is feeling low or in a struggle to just get out five days in a row and watch the sunrise. I mean, just watch it. From first light to orange globe or full light, it'll change your disposition. I'm certain of it. between Great Nash and Little Nash. It's a lighthouse over on Little Nash. We've seen not so many seagulls in the past couple of days, but here they are hanging out on Great Nash. Great Nash, uh, there's a house here and apparently there are sheep on this island. We were recommended to check it out by the, um, the locals here. They said this is a pretty special island, so paddled out this morning just after sunrise and we're gonna check it out before we head up to Doyle Island. We found some seagulls this morning. They're here greeting us. Hard to see but they're all up on the beach. You can hear them squawking. Porpoise sightings have been frequent during our paddle along the coast of Maine, but it never gets old. It is always magical to see them surface.
a gross takeout, yeah. Wow, there's so much trash up here. Doyle Island is privately owned and shared with MITA members who call ahead. There is a very little one-room cabin on the edge of a grassy marsh field that they allow you to use, a potential nice reprieve from the tent. When we walked up towards the cabin, Katie in the lead, I noticed her jacket looked like it was humming. I realized she had a sweater of mosquitoes on her back. It looked like her entire back was a hum. We boogied back to the boats and quickly determined Boyle, I mean Doyle, would not be the spot for us. In fact, a horsefly chased us away for almost two nautical miles. on leaving Jones Port RV Park and Campground which was a reef supply stop. We were able to shower and do laundry at the shipyard nearby and head into town and resupply with some groceries. Met a nice older couple from Maine who camps here for the summer that offered to take us into town and let us resupply which was quite generous as it was about a six mile round trip walk so we appreciate not having to carry groceries and water. Thanks Jane and Philip. We had a little delay leaving here. We we're hoping to leave a little bit earlier to use more of the currents in our favor but we were socked in fog. Couldn't see across the campground this morning so finally about 9 30 the fog has burned off enough this is a busy little port with uh, lobstermen going in and out, so we didn't want to be unseen in the dense fog, so I decided to wait until the visibility was better. So we are now free, and the current will shift in about 20 minutes, so we'll hopefully get out towards the end of Jones Port, Kelly Point here, where the current is the strongest, about a knot and a half at the strongest which doesn't sound like a lot but when you're only paddling two and a half to three knots it makes quite a difference in how it feels to paddle so we are headed for Halifax Island which is south of Roke Island we've been given a recommendation to check out Roke Island by many sailboaters and people that have visited the area apparently a couple of nice sand beaches in a cove so we'll paddle by there and decide we want to stop or just head on to Halifax. This is my typical situation, kind of chasing Katie in life.
you catch where the beach was supposed to be? Yay, sand! In everything we own. I mean, under our feet. Just landed here on Roke Island. We'd been told about this by numerous people along the way. Um, billed as a sand Caribbean beach. And in fact, there's a lot of sand. This is a rare finding here in coastal Maine. Lots of rocky ground. So this is quite incredible. and there's no swell at this beach, so that's nice. That turquoise water at the edge. Skeg! Yeah. Woo. Just dip. Ah, just dip my butt in the water. It's not great. Ow! Calf cramp. Calf cramp. It's like <laughs> it's like getting sea legs all over again if you're paddling for a bit. It's challenging. Skeg. I'm always happy to be greeted with a little sun. That's not an auspicious first one. Oh. That was a good one. Yeah, eight miles, average speed 3.3, .3, two hour I 
Another good one. All right, one more good one. I'm gonna call it good because three's a magical number. wasn't even the best one. You missed the best one. All right, let's go see the scene. And then we'll know what it is. What it was and what it shall be. Eagle, juvenile Another sign over there. I see that. More than one. There were two, if I remember, there were two landing sites. There's only one campsite. Looks like it's right here between the two spits, yeah? Between the two spits? It looks like it's just, doesn't it look right here? That's very confusing, that map. It's the weirdest map ever. I mean, I get it, like, they're saying that's closed. The end of that island? But the map makes no sense. You see it? Because the island goes much further than that. Yeah. Because it's just upside down. Let, or it's this way. So we can't go to the left? We can't go to the left. You think that's what that sign says? That might be what those signs say is that that area is closed. Because the, the island's this way, right? Yeah. Still weird. Yeah. Then you'd think there'd be a trail. This is what often happens. Confusion abounds. Strange pile of red bricks. Have they forgotten that I'm kind of sensitive too? Well, it could work. It can work. I was very fortunate to have a very good scattering experience. Along with a lot of life and value lessons, I learned the power of tying knots. While I know many knots, in truth I only use a few on a regular basis. A taut line hitch, trucker's hitch, double half hitch, and the occasional bowling. It was fun to tie some tripod lashings when on Halifax to hold up our rain fly for some shade. I also have a chuckle when in an outdoor store and see the numerous products designed and sold to hold tensions on a line. There was a whole end cap display dedicated to them at the last shop I was in. All that work in design and manufacturing so people can avoid learning to tie one knot, the taut line hitch.
Nature has such a wonderful therapeutic effect. When we're in the wilderness for an extended period, we feel our body rhythm sinking with the earth, a slow, easy wake up as the first light of dawn gently touches the tent, greeted with morning bird song. After a full day in the elements, being bathed by sunlight, salt air, and wind, we're ready to nestle into our tent as the sun goes down. The sound of the waves massages our brain into sleep.